everybody, this is Mike, and you're watching the Real Black Podcast. I'm joined once again by my partner, my friend, my compadre. What's happening, y'all? EP here once again with Mike and Real Black Experience for you. Who we got, Mike? Well, this this week we have a great interview with a, a legend in the field of animation, a pioneer, one of the first black animators in history, oh, wow. Mr. Leo D. Sullivan. And uh, he's going to talk with us about his new project, his latest project. He's been doing it for 15 years called Afro Kids and the need for positive black images in animation. How you doing, sir? Hello, how you doing? Doing great. It's it's a pleasure and honor and a privilege to have you join us uh, to talk about your your work, your life, your career, and your project Afro Kids Afro Kids TV on Roku. Um, so just to jump right into it, um, you know what what can you tell us about Afro Kids? <laughs> well, God, there are a bunch of kids who who are kind of representative of. Uh, our people, as they say, and, uh, and the whole idea is to have out positive images of, uh, you know, black characters on the screen, uh, solving issues that deal with kids, you know, parental guidance, uh, learning self-worth, uh, the challenges of life, uh, how to, you know, growing up, the issues uh, that they face, and then the happiness that they can have and how they emerge themselves into the society. That's basically it. But they go on adventures they do uh, in the past and presently they they have fun and uh, the idea is for our kids to see positive stuff because they see so much negative uh, stuff that uh, kind of warps their minds, but they don't know what good is anymore. And uh, yep, and people always look at them these days. The younger parents in their, uh, you know, under forties, they're in their, you know, twenties, thirties, uh, or younger, <laughs> uh, don't realize what's going on, and they hand their kids off to the system. And when they do that, the system does what it does, and that's nothing. If anything, the system destroys the kids uh, mentally, and they. But the, uh, you know, that's another whole issue. Mm. That's another podcast. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, but it's what we talk about here on the Real Black Podcast is is sort of um, how how um, what we take into our minds affects us, you know, and from an early age. You know, I grew up watching your work, um, you know, and thought nothing of, of it, you know, to watch Saturday morning cartoons with my footed pajamas and my alphabet cereal, you know? Um, you know, so at what point did you realize, Mr. Sullivan, that, that uh, things, things were going in the wrong direction as far as images for black kids? Well, I was in the studios. I worked on a lot of TV shows, popular shows over the when I was young and getting in the industry. And I realized that when uh, the black characters, uh, ethnicities, different ones, were marginalized. And sometimes marginalization comes in subtle ways. And, uh, and, uh, and I said, somebody needs to change that. But most of the people who are working in the industry that happen to be African-American or people of culture, they sort of have to go along with what is dished out to them and do what, what they're told to do in order to make a living. So the only way to escape that is to, is to kind of go out on your own and see if you could build something that uh, was more in line of what you thought could build up our people, but it's very hard for our people to to grasp it. They're out there. We get a few that understand what we're doing, but uh, the younger ones they just don't 
they don't go there. It's like someone told me the other day, uh, they want to see happy things. They want to see things that uh, brighten their lives and, and they don't want to deal with those issues of uh, making a living every day or struggling or, or, or having, what do you call it, um, relationships. It's like, I always ask people now, when's the last time you've seen a, a black couple dance holding each other? Mm. Think about it for a minute. Just on regular television. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that many, sets up your programming. How many times have you seen uh, uh, them hug their children or, or take out time to listen to what the kids have to say? Mm. Those are issues, and people don't know they're doing it. And then uh, they're enjoying a good life while they're young. I understand that. I've been on that battlefield myself. So, but now you you realize that as you get older, that there's some issues that uh, that uh, you're gonna have to come to grips with. Mm -hmm. And then the whole thing is a measurement. At what stage? Do you take your uh, your family or your children seriously, and really are looking out for them to uh, to grow? Do you do that when they're babies, which is really when you should start, or do you wait till they're sweaty seventeen-year-old kids looking for guidance? Mm. Mm. Good points. So Afro kids is geared towards uh, the different age groups as well, right? Yeah, eventually. We we, we sort of stay in the range of a uh, young, like two years old, up to about maybe 15, 16. Because by the time they, they uh, get in the teens, they know everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing... Uh, an 81-year-old man can teach them, or any of their parents, they know everything, because when they say, we're on the streets, we know what's happening. Well, they really don't. Mm. You know, I, I was looking at some gang uh, documentaries um, the other night, and I, like out of Chicago and uh, Detroit and, and uh, Florida and some of the major cities of young men that just 20 years old, killing each other is, part of the game and I said where did that thought come from do they know that they're that there's a whole force around them they don't own the territory they're killing each other they don't know about owning no real estate they don't own know about but yet they're out there and what do they fight over they flash their money they show their guns they show their macho where do they get all that Right, except for reflecting what they see. That's right. Yeah. So what we're trying to do with our brand is to try to change some of that thinking. We're not going to change it all. We're not going to change the world. We know that. But for the people to stop for a minute, just a minute, and analyze what's really going on uh, and and take a, a reevaluation of their lives and and uh, where they are. Wouldn't they rather raise a kid that's going to take care of them than one that made a million dollars a week selling crack, but's in prison now for the rest of his life? Mm. Mm. But when you got to pay for the groceries, when you got to pay for that medication, uh, you look the other way. I, I, when I see all these shootings and everything and, I, and the people are crying and they try to make the kids look like they were sweethearts. <laughs> mm. The parents are not with their kids. When they leave the house and they come back at four in the morning or two days later and you don't ask where they've been, you got a problem. Right. So Afro Kids is there to help stop this before it starts, hopefully. Yeah. You got to start when they're young. And, uh, and we need more support for people who believe in us to support what we're doing. Because as you know, um, as they say, 
the other side are not, is not going to give us much help. Right. Up, uplift ourselves. That's something we have to do collectively. Young, old, and one foot in the grave. I go back to, um, gee where there's so many shows. You have to look me up on IMB. Is it, what is it? IMDB. Yeah. Look me up on that to see my history of basic stuff uh, of what I've done over the years. <clears throat> but there really were certain segments of my career of advancement. Uh, mm -hmm. In 19, was it 60? Whenever the, the, the uprising, the Watts riot started, I was, uh, right. I e emerged out into the, the wilderness on my own. So I went out on my own and started my own studio called uh, Vignette Multimedia, which you'll see on some of the titles of our of our products that we've rejuvenated to bring it to the present audience. So a lot of the kids don't know that that history and what's come before them. And why I stay out here, even at my age, is so they can see uh, when they look at me as an old man. I mean, I still I work computers. I uh, my wife works along with me, have uh, us make make the content. We we work with young musicians, artists, and everything, and uh, and with, and uh, to create manufacture some of these things. Uh, but we need the support of our people. Our people don't support us like they should. They think all this magic what we do is just at ether. And mm -hmm. all they got to do is just contribute to our Patreon account or buy some equity in the company or invest right. Right. or donate. We have a foundation. So we have a, we have a California corporation. Mm -hmm. See, everybody pats us on the head that we're doing a good job but nobody helps out. Yeah. Right. No, we definitely want people to, especially f folks who are watching, who are invested in the, in the outcome of their children to know about Afro kids and, and to use, use this as a utility. Um, That's right. I tell people, look, our little subscriptions are $5 a month. That's, that's a damn Big Mac or uh, <laughs> one of those fast food things that kills you and you won't invest just a few cents into your child's future. We're not the, we're not the panacea of the answer, but we are something that you can, you can, uh, uh, use. You can have Mickey Mouse. You can have SpongeBob. You can have, have, uh, a Coco Melon. You can have all those put Afro kids in the mix. I fight a hard battle trying to get that message out. Our people want to seem like, it seems like, just kind of like the, the youngsters, they want to, basically what they want to do is live their lives while they're young. And you can't fault them, fault them for that. But that irresponsibility. Why are kids living at home at 30 years old? Mm. At thirty years old, yeah. That that it seems as though that uh, that horse has been out the barn for about fifty years. <laughs> yeah. Why do? Why are there so many single parent families? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Why is the male person demonized? Why are you guys like yeah, these myself, are... sometimes afraid to go out at night? Why should you be afraid to go out at night? Hmm. So we got to reach to our children and our younger parents and parents to teach their kids how to be strong and stand up so they don't, they don't become afraid like us. Well, Mr. Sullivan, um, any final thoughts? Any besides just the the 
people should go check out on Roku, Android TV, Amazon Fire Stick, and YouTube. Search for AfroKids.com uh, TV channel. Yeah, there's more they can do. Mm -hmm. Support us with money, not with pats on the head.